is the Hummer EV the fantastic rock crawler it's been cracked up to be? We'll find that out today. One of the first things about the Hummer EV that really got people's attention was its 11,500 pound-feet of torque. Is that really so much torque? Well, not really, considering that that's wheel torque, not crankshaft torque. For some reason, it's become a fad with car manufacturers to advertise the wheel torque of their electric vehicles instead of crankshaft torque. Besides being a little bit deceptive to the customer, this tactic is risky in my opinion, because if diesel trucks ever started advertising in wheel torque, boy, electric vehicles would look like horse and buggies. My 2005 Silverado has 33,000 pound-feet of torque or more at takeoff at the wheel. But what do they advertise? The little over 600 pound-feet of torque coming out of the crankshaft. For a much more relevant example, stock Jeeps easily pass 20,000 pound-feet of torque, and modified crawlers of any make can say adios to over 100,000 pound-feet of torque. Suddenly, the Hummer EV's whopping 11,500 pound-feet of torque isn't sounding so whopping. The only way to know whether the Hummer EV can really rock crawl is to try it. But personally, I don't have that much cash. So the best I can do is come up with some realistic scenarios and calculate out the math and physics and see if it can perform. I wanna make a note that for the rest of this video, when I say Hummer EV or when I give an example, it's gonna be talking about the Hummer EV Pickup Edition 1. I know some people would say, well, the SUV's got better specs. I'm sorry, I cannot use the SUV as an example simply because they have not released its weight. And if you're trying to do physics calculations without the mass of an object, forget it. So, I pull up in my brand new Edition 1 Hummer EV pickup truck to a nice 45 degree rock slope. Can I make it to the top? The first thing we need to know about our vehicle is its curb weight, which happens to be about 9,000 pounds. That's more than a crew cab 8 foot bed F450 diesel Ford pickup. If the curb weight of the Hummer is about 9,000 pounds, then after we throw a few passengers, cargo, spare tire or two in, we're gonna say the operating weight of the Hummer is about 9,700 pounds. There are three terms I like to define. Number one, normal force. Normal force, when you're on flat ground, is exactly equal to your weight. When you're on a slope, it's equal to the amount of your weight that's actually shoving you into the surface you're driving on. Second, the coefficient of rolling resistance. If there is a spherical or circular body rotating or rolling on a flat surface, and it has a coefficient of rolling resistance of 0 0.01, all that means is it takes a hundredth of a pound of force applied to one pound worth of that circular or spherical body to rotate it, to get it moving. Third, the coefficient of traction. It also has many other names. Basically, it's what portion of your weight, or if you want to get more specific, what portion of your normal force you can accelerate with before you slip. Now for all you engineers out there, another disclaimer. I'm simplifying the traction variable significantly. For as you well know, if I didn't simplify it a little bit, we would be here for a very, very, very long time. Now let's get back to the Hummer EV. I think I was supposed to be over here. First off, real tire diameter, 33.5 inches. Now you might say, stop! They said there's 35 inch stock tires on there. True, but because you're rock crawling, you're running low pressure, so your diameter goes down a little bit. Second, the coefficient of rolling resistance, we're gonna say is 0 0.07. That's typically high for a pneumatic tire on a very hard surface like a boulder, but since we're running low pressure, it's probably gonna be around that. Now, the total weight of our vehicle, we're gonna say is 9,700 pounds. According to the engineers, the actual max torque output of each of the motors is somewhere between 380 pound-feet and 400. We're gonna say 400 because we wanna be nice. When you pencil that through their respective gear ratios, you actually get 13,720 pound-feet of wheel torque. That's a lot more than 11,500. So what brings in that discrepancy? Well, when you're just going after zero to 60 time, that's an actually excessive amount of torque that's just gonna make you spin out and really not gonna help acceleration. So they limit the motors down to somewhere near 340 pound-feet of torque for on-road use. But when you get into some really rocky off-road spots, it will provide you, as far as I know, with 13,720 pound-feet of torque. The front gear reduction for that one motor up there is 13.3 to one and the rear reduction ratio for those two motors, each with their own reduction, is 10.5 to one. 
Now that we've got the constants of the situation under our belt, let's dive right back into scenario one, that nice 45 degree slope. In this scenario, we're going to assume that the vehicle is in terrain mode. Terrain mode is only about two inches higher than the Hummer's standard ride height, which would put its center of gravity nice and low and limit the amount of weight transfer that happens from the front to the back. We've got 17.5% of the weight on each of the front wheels and 32.5% of the weight on each of the back wheels. 45 degree slope on every wheel and an average traction coefficient of 1.09 for every wheel. Using these numbers and the constants, I've done quite a few calculations that are not all shown here because they would cover a lot of boards. If at any point you doubt my work or think I was shifting the numbers around, please comment below and I will provide you with all of my proofs. Now, our weight on the rear axle is going to be 6,305 pounds. That would make our normal force at a 45 degree slope 4,458.3 pounds for the rear axle. That would make max traction 4,859.6 pounds when the traction coefficient is 1.09. The combined max available force from the two rear motors would be 6,017.9 pounds. The max traction we can apply before we slip is greater than the required force. And the force available is greater than both of them. That means overall, we can definitely move the rear axle and its respective weight up the hill. Now let's see about the front axle. Well, the weight on the front axle is 3,395 pounds. The normal force of the front axle is 2,400.6 pounds. And the required force combining rolling resistance and just overcoming gravity on the slope is 2,568.6 pounds. The max traction we can apply before we slip on the front axle is 2,640.7 pounds, and the force available from that single motor with that 13.3 uh, to 1 reduction is 3,811.3 pounds. Once again, the max traction is larger than the required force, and the force available is larger than both of those. So, Overall, we can make it up a 45 degree slope with these variables. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking a nice 45 degree, perfectly flat incline is kind of idealistic. And I agree with you. So let's put this Hummer EV in a nice rocky tough spot like this. Don't those numbers terrify you? You want to see a picture? Okay. For this second scenario, we're probably going to be in extract mode because we need the extra clearance. Our rear driver's tire is hanging all the way at the bottom of its nice 13 inches of travel in the air, so 0% of the weight. Now something might have just popped into your head. By having these individual motors on the rear, when one of them goes in the air, you just lost a lot of your potential force. Correct. That's one of the drawbacks about having individual motors. This problem is exacerbated by the fact that the Hummer EV went fully independent on a suspension, thus limiting wheel articulation. The rear passenger tire is taking a lot of the weight because it's at the lowest corner of the vehicle and it is climbing a nice, steep, but clean rock face. The front axle, a little bit different story. Both of those wheels have a little bit of sand on top of that boulder, so a little bit worse traction. Taking it up here, these are what the numbers come out to be. The rear driver's side tire is hanging in the air, so we don't need to worry about that. The rear passenger tire is bearing 70% of the weight of the vehicle, climbing a 40 degree rock face, and has a tractional coefficient of 0.95. The front driver's side tire is bearing 10% of the weight of the vehicle, climbing a 10 degree rock slope with a few pebbles on it, which puts the tractional coefficient down to 0.65. The front Passenger tire is bearing 20% of the weight, climbing a 30 degree slope, and has a tractional coefficient equal to this side, 0.65. Now you might be wondering, why is the weight transfer so much more dramatic on this slope, which is technically a little bit less severe than the 45 degree slope? Well, because we went into extract mode, our center of gravity moved up pretty far, which meant that there's a lot more load transfer. This tire is bearing 6,790 pounds of weight. It is bearing 5,201.4 pounds of normal force. And the required force to get its weight to budge is 4,728.6 pounds. The maximum traction that can be applied on that tire is 4,941.3 pounds. And the force available to that tire just from this one motor is 3,009 pounds. Uh-oh, there's a pretty big deficit there. The rear axle has a net deficit of 1,719.6 pounds. 
that it cannot provide. Basically, that motor is incapable of giving enough leverage to move it up the hill. Now, all hope is not lost yet because if the upper axle can provide enough extra pull without passing its traction threshold to pull the rear axle up, we might still be okay. But this isn't looking good. Let's see what it comes out to. This math has gone on long enough. I need a break. Okay, let's keep going. The front axle, averaging out both of these two tires, has 2,910 pounds of weight, has 2,734.5 pounds of normal force, and there is a required 1,186.7 pounds of force to get its weight to move, and the traction maximum is 1,777.4 pounds, and the force available to that front axle is 3,811.3 pounds. Now, the net positive Basically, the amount of force that that front motor can apply above the required force is 590.7 pounds. That is not enough to help out that poor rear axle that's in the red 1,719.6 pounds. So, unfortunately, you just got yourself into that situation with maybe a little bit of momentum, and you're stuck. You can't even spin your wheels. You might be able to spin your front wheels, definitely not your rear wheel. You are literally stalled out. That is not pretty, especially because even if you have a winch, you weigh over 9,000 pounds, close to 10,000 pounds. Whatever poor Jeep is in front of you is going to have a really hard time pulling you up that slope. There should be no tractionally feasible situation in which a so-called rock crawling vehicle has inadequate torque to get to the top of a slope. I was supposed to thank you for something, but I can't remember what it was. Thank <laughs> you.